Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Ethan, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the video on the channel, and look at this asshole. I don't know, what asshole parks their car on the side of, I don't even know if you can see it, but he's not even in a spot, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, Friday nights, we are kind of in a predicament because all spots are filled, and look at this. That's where uh, that white car, it's not in a spot. But we're gonna see what happens, hope for the best. Hopefully I don't get a ticket or anything. Um, there's just no spots right now, Friday night. It's about, what's going on, man? What's that? Shout out to Zach. What's happening, what's happening? Shout out to Rampage Poker, Good baby. Good luck tonight. Have, good luck trying to find a spot, dude. It's dude, miserable out here. That pack right now? I didn't, that is my white car. I didn't, oh, God. I didn't find a spot. Right, <laughs> you too, bro. So I'm not in a spot, it's 9 p.m. or a little bit late, later than that, Friday nights, so. But we'll see, hopefully my car doesn't get towed or anything. Um, but we just kind of made our own spot. We got creative with it. Um, see, this guy's doing the same thing. What this, what this car's doing, that black car, is basically what I did. So I'm hoping that uh, if other cars are gonna do it, then my car should be all right. Oh well, I wasn't the first one to do it. But uh, anyways, we're in a predicament too because we're gonna go play some live poker. And I dropped my thing. I'm gonna play some live poker, but I'm actually in a Poker Bros tournament right now. And we're actually sitting <laughs> Like to ninth in chips right now, uh, midway through the tournament. So that's gonna be super interesting. I'm sitting with 60k. How, let's let's take a look. Where am I at? I'm fifth in chips. I'm fifth in chips in this tournament right now. So we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna play some live, play some online poker, and uh, wish us luck. One of the very first hands we actually play, we are dealt 6-9 of diamonds in the big blind awesome premium holding here. Very pretty as well. Um, there's four limpers to me and here just going to check my option as the big blind and we're off to a flop. The flop comes 6-9 king two hearts. So we flop bottom two pair and here I am uh, going to be out of position. I actually lead out for $15 here flopping two pair. We have the player to my left under the gun who raises me up to $30. Min raises it and it folds all the way around to me. Um, facing this min click, facing an under the gun limping range, um, I'm just going to be thinking I'm ahead a lot of the time. Unless he has a hand like King-9 suited or something like that, uh, I'm just going to be raising this for sure, thinking I'm ahead um, a majority of the time. So I go ahead and re-raise three bet him to $100. He doesn't think too long before ripping it all in. $300 effective as he covers me and I'm sitting with the $300 starting stack. And here, when I go ahead and 3-bet re-raise to $100, I'm not going to be folding, I don't think. I realistically only lose to like pocket 6s and pocket 9s, and there's only one combination of both of those hands. So blocking those hands, um, maybe a combo draw, something like that makes a lot of sense, like 7-8 of hearts. But uh, with bottom two pair, definitely too strong to fold. So I call the $200 more and he shows over the bad news. We're up against pocket nines. So we're drawing basically dead. The run out is obviously good for him. So the very first hand that we play, we get stacked and we're off to rebuy time. Shout out to Chuck. Thanks for watching the channel and uh, following the vlog. Nice hand to you, man. Next hand that we play is another dicey one. We have 9-7 of diamonds on the button here, and a middle position player opens it up to $15. Here, a uh, very non-standard call, but we're playing this hand because why not? We're on the button. So I call on the button, and the big blind makes the call as well. So we're off to a flop, which comes 8 4 six, two diamonds out there. So it's our turn to flop an actual combo draw, and this is the spot that we love. The middle position player C bets $20, and this is just not enough for me. So I go ahead and raise to $55, a pretty small amount, um, less than 3x was what I was going for. I'm in position, super strong hand, let's just try to build a pot. The big blind folds, and the middle position player makes the call. So we're off to a turn, hoping to improve. The turn comes the jack of spades, not a card that helps us at all and he checks to us. Looking at his stack with about $215 effective, I think a jam would be best here. It would be an over jam to the size of the pot, uh, but here, such a strong hand, I don't really think any sort of sizing besides this makes sense. Um, I, don't, I don't really wanna bet $100, leaving $100 behind, like not, nothing really makes sense. So we're just gonna go for it, maximize fold equity, and even if he does call, like we have the world to go by. So I go ahead and jam $215 effective. He doesn't think too long before making the call. So let's try to improve here. Definitely need some help. The river comes the six of diamonds. So, so the board is paired, but uh, we do improve to our flush, which is pretty good. We show our hand and looks like we are good. So we take that one. We're in for a high variance day after these two hands. 
Hand after that, we looked down at two black queens in early positions, so I'm going to be raising it up to $18 over one limper. Um, we have one older gentleman in the cutoff who makes the call and the limper makes the call as well. So let's go to a flop. The flop comes 10, 6, 4, rainbow. Here, such a dry board and our image is pretty loosey-goosey. I'm definitely here to... Uh, Definitely shown that I'm good for action for sure, which is no surprise to you guys. I go ahead and throw out a bet of $40 here on the larger side. The player on the cutoff, older gentleman, who seems to be a non-believer, he's been looking me up and down, um, and actually raises us to $100. It folds to me, and here he only has $160 behind. And honestly, he is an older gentleman, but there's so little behind. I'm definitely not folding to this raise with an overpair. Can we get value from worse? Can we get a 10x hand to call a jam? Um, at the end of the day, I just go for it. He knows I'm very active, and I don't think there are any bluffs in this raising range. So when he's raising, he's got, he's he's definitely committing himself to the pot. So let's just get the money in right now on this flop. So I go ahead and jam. He could not have snap called any faster. So we don't love it, but let's go to a run out and see what happens. The turn is a seven and the river is a jack. So not really the best run out in the world as some straights get there. Two pair combos. Um, yucky board, but I show my hand pocket queens and looks like we are good. He apparently had ace 10. So flopping top top and uh, we, we got max value there. The following hand is an interesting spot for sure. So let's go over it. In early position, we look down at pocket jacks and I opened it up to $15. We get three callers and action was onto the big blind who folds her hand but exposes it by accident. She exposes jack deuce, which is unfortunate. So now that we know that uh, us flopping a set is fairly unlikely as there's only one jack left in the deck, but let's go to a flop multi way out of position. The flop comes king five six rainbow. Here I'm first to act. I just gonna I'm just gonna have to check this all the time. So here I check. Sometimes could bet, but we're playing four ways to this flop. Uh, a king is definitely very likely. So I check. It actually ends up checking all the way around. We're off to a turn. Saw a free card. Turn is the case jack. What a miracle jack to come up for us. So now that we definitely believe that we're ahead, so I go ahead and throw out a very small bet with our set here for twenty five dollars, and we get two players to make the call. So um, here off to a river three ways river comes a three. So basically not really a card that changes a whole lot from my perspective. The small blind here actually uh, checks. So the small blind is actually in this pot who called. So he actually only has about $30 in his stack total. So pretty insignificant um, trying to target the player to my left who has a pretty big stack and covers us. So um, thinking about hands I can get value from, I can't really think of a whole lot. Maybe some two pair hands. I'm not really sure, but um, I go for an over bet because I think I'm going to get the $30 in anyways. So let's try to get some more value from the player to my left somehow. I go ahead and throw out a bet of $150. Um, super nutted here with middle set. Um, not, not expecting to be turning a set ever. But um, I go ahead and bet the 150. The player to my left thinks about it and then raises us to $350. What the hell is going on here? When I overbet on the river, I feel like him raising over to the top of this overbet is so nutted all the time. And I'm sitting with basically the nuts. Um, I don't have a straight. I mean, it doesn't make sense how this three could change a whole lot. Unless he was playing a hand like four deuce or four seven um that besides that that's the only thing that really would make sense in this spot uh so i mean i guess i could beat some sets some pocket fives pocket sixes maybe a really light call with pocket threes here i'm just way too nutted to fold i think um there's 200 dollars more to us to make the call but the facing this raise is just so so strong the best hand i could really ever have here in this spot i go ahead and make the calls i can't really put them on too many straights um i say out loud i can't ever fold so i toss in the call he shows us the bad news. It's seven four of spades. Um, yeah, that just happened there. He cracked us with our set of jacks, and he got there with his open ended straight draw. So never saw that one coming. Um, in hindsight, I guess I could fold that because facing an overbet raise is really really strong. So could I have folded there? Um, sometimes yes, but at this specific moment, obviously, um, couldn't find a fold.
Next hand after that, we're sitting pretty short now as our stack is kind of crippled. Um, we have King, Queen of Clubs, Unleon on plus one. Uh, Unleon on player opens it up to $12, and here we're sitting with about $250. We're sitting really, really short. Um, I, good, I could usually three bet this, but here facing Unleon on open, not really sure what that range could be like. So um, I just make the call, and we're actually going to the flop four ways. The flop comes king, jack, three, two hearts, and a diamond out there, and action checks to me, surprisingly. Getting high board, multi-way, let's get bet for value and charge some draws out there. So I throw out a bet of $30, and very weird enough, all the players make the call. So didn't expect that to happen, but we're off to a turn. The turn is actually a pretty good card. It is a three of diamonds. So brings in their back door flush draw, definitely eliminates someone having pocket threes in their hands. So um, here, the big one actually leads out, open leads out for $50 on this turn card. Really, really weird for us. Um, the only gun player folded and actions onto me, not sitting with a whole lot in our stack. We're sitting with about a pot size bet. So um, let's just go with our hand. King Queen is certainly good enough. I only lose to King Jack, and that's really it. Um, so I go ahead and elect to make the jam. It folds all the way back to the player on the big blind who thinks about it and folds his ace deuce of diamonds. So really interesting line there. We take it down on this turn here and chip back up a little bit. Another weird spot we get involved in, we have pocket aces in middle position. Early position player limps to us. He's a really big stack and covers us for sure. Um, here, I'm going to raise it up to $15 with aces. We get two callers, the button and early position limper. So let's go to a flop three ways. Flop comes jack, nine, seven, two spades out there. Uh, spade draw out there, fairly connected board. Uh, I'm going to be c-betting with my over pair all the time. So I go with a bet of $25 and only the early position player makes the call. So let's go to a turn. Turn comes the four of hearts, not a card that really changes anything. So once he checks to us, let's go ahead and size up a little bit here for more value. I bet $70. He doesn't think too long before check raising us, uh, min check raising us to $140. I don't know what this is. I'm really confused and I'm really not sure what this check raise means, but for an extra $70, I can't fold, I'm not going anywhere. So we go ahead and make the call in position as well and evaluate a river. The river is the 10 of diamonds, so the spade draw does brick out and he takes another interesting line and just checks to us. What in the world could this hand be? Could it be a really weirdly played king jack, queen jack, a hand that I beat? Uh... I'm not entirely sure to be honest with you because when he check raises the turn and then just checks on the on the river here, um, I'm not really sure what this line could be, but I think I can comfortably bet fold on this river card given the action and line. With our over pair, we can get a whole lot of calls from jack X's that uh, did not improve to two pairs. So I go with a really small sizing of $75. He makes the call, and we show our hand. He shows us something we didn't expect, pocket fours for a turn set. So the check raise makes sense, kind of, but um, everything else didn't make sense. <laughs> Next hand to go over, we pick up pocket aces once again, and I open up the action to $15. Interesting dynamics because this is the fourth time in a row that I have raised preflop. So here, picking up aces is a good, pretty good time for that. So a um, great time to look splashy, and only one player makes the call, unfortunately. He is the big blind, and uh, he's a pretty short stack. So we're off to a flop, which comes king, queen, jack, all spades. And the big blind thinks about it and open jams his entire stack of $57. Here, red aces, not loving the spots. Can't be calling the spot, so... I fold reluctantly, unfortunately, um, but he said it was a good fold because I showed my aces and I was just really annoyed after that. Last hand of the session that we we're going to go over, we pick up king 10 of clubs in the big blind and we're playing six handed here. Um, this is well into the session, a few hours after that aces hand, I think. So let's go ahead and talk about this hand. There are two limbers to the player in the small blind who raises the action up to $22. Pretty large raise, if I do say so myself, but uh, probably could be finding a fold here, but playing shorthanded, um, suited king 10, let's just go ahead and play with it. Let's just go ahead and play it in position of the small blind. So um, all three of us make the call, myself and the two limpers. So let's go to a bloated pot here, multi-way. The flop comes at 10, 5, 3, all spades. 
And when the small blind checks to us here uh, with top pair and a pretty good kicker, we can charge all of these spade draws. And I think if the small blind did have an over pair, he would definitely be continuing leading out in this spot. So I go with a sizing of $70. It folds to a player who has been um, acting pretty wild recently. He just plays every hand. He jams a lot. It, he, he's in my notes as crazy. So uh, he goes ahead and actually jams his whole stack in. $145 total, so not a whole lot more. Basically just a min-raised jam. Um, before I can make this call of $145, the small blind re-jams his entire stack, and he covers us. He has... And he covers us, so we have about $375 more to call. I don't know what I got myself involved in, but we're surely out of this pot. The small blind has ace, queen of spades, flopping the nuts. What a crazy flop for him. And uh, the other player had the king of spades. Doesn't really matter. Ace, queen of spades takes this one down, and uh, we did not win this one. So I just wrapped up the session, and all I have to say is that today was probably the most frustrating, degenerate day, night I've ever had. It's 2.40 in the morning. I played for about two hours too long. These last two hours, I literally punted off my entire stack, not even playing poker, like playing bingo, being an idiot. I have nothing good to report from the last two hours because I was just like like just throwing money around like an idiot like i was this was crazy i've never like experienced this like i just played for way too long um and i don't know i was playing i wasn't even playing like uh either people say you're playing an a b c game i was literally playing like z worst kind of poker ever um yeah that was awful and i'm actually super upset about it so i was in the game for 800 dollars, out of the game for 197 and you're like how the hell did you get to a 197 because I literally gave it away. I don't even, I can't even explain how badly I gave away my stack. So um, I'm not happy about this one. I'm literally, I don't even know, like I'm ashamed about it and I'm reporting this, it's terrible. I don't even know how to express how I feel about this because this was literally like total degen and I just punted away $600 I didn't need to. So that's the that's the day, um, th that's how the, this session went. I have nothing great to report. Um, I'm super disappointed at myself for all of that shit because I just punted away in two hours. Anyways, uh, really frustrating. The premium hands that I got cracked and then I just didn't help myself by giving, literally giving away money. So that's that. Worst I've ever played this session by far. This one could have been avoided. It, it's just, it, this is like literally the worst session I've ever played. That's it, that's all I got. Hopefully you enjoyed the degenerate activities and degenerate hands. I'm gonna go home and uh, think about this one because this one was just god awful. Anyways, dislike the video if you made it this far because I do not deserve, because I am better than doing this. So dislike this video because I don't know why. I don't dislike it. Actually, did like it for the YouTube algorithm, but I'll just dislike it in the comment section. Comment below, dislike because I suck. Uh, this never should have happened. It never should have gone to this place to begin with. But anyways, thanks for watching. Peace.